How do I make Minecraft Bedrock Thumbnails? I do the thumbnails only on PC. So first you download GIMP, click on download, scroll down and click on download GIMP directly. Once done, open up your file explorer, go to downloads, open up GIMP, select English or whatever language you have and click on install. I already have it installed. Once installed, open up your start menu and find GIMP. Here's the basic layout of GIMP. So on the top left, you got here my mouse cursor, you guys can see this is the toolbox section. This toolbox section holds all the tools you need to use to make your thumbnails, your Minecraft Bedrock thumbnails here on GIMP. Here we have tools options. This is very, very important. Take note of that. It's on the left. And if we go on the right, bottom right, we have layers and then here you can do new layers, remove layers and merge layers. And on the very top, we have the toolbar so we can create a new image in here first take a screenshot of an object or maybe your character in game now you open that in gimp you go to file open find your screenshot here we go so if you guys have a 1920 by 1080 monitor then you guys are fine for this step but if you don't have a 1920 by 1080 monitor like me you guys will need to create a new layer okay by pressing ctrl n or by going into file new Type in 1920 for the width and 1080 for the height. So it becomes HD. Set it to pixels. Click OK and here we are. You can also scroll your mouse wheel while holding the control key to zoom in and out. And you can press Shift J or go to view, center in image window and it will center it like this. Or control Shift J or view, zoom, fit image into window to fit the whole image. Now, you guys will have tabs here. So, the first tab that we have is the screenshot of our image. So, how do you get the screenshot of your image to this new 1920 Full HD layer? Bruh. You go and drag that image, drag the tab of that image to the image, and then drag it in the center of that image. There we go. Now, it is imported. And how do you make your screenshot 1920 by 1080 as well? Well, you go to Layer, Scale Layer. Make sure you do not have this toggle because if you have this button toggled, it will scale it proportionally. But if you don't have this toggled, you can freely adjust it, whatever you want, even if that means making the image distorted. So with quality interpolation, I will pick low halo, not no halo. No halo is good if you guys want to preserve colors, but low halo is good with text and also pixel art scale. So now it is perfectly fit in our image. Now, what do we do? Well, first I add text. We also have our original background. Let's remove that. This is now our background. So how do you create text? Well, you press T on your keyboard or you just go to this text tool in our toolbar. Click on the image and immediately start typing. You can change the font. I have the minor craftery font. I'll leave a download link for the minor craftery font. So how do you install it? You just double click on the downloaded true type font file. Click on install and then it'll install the minor craftery font. By the way, you guys need to restart GIMP. Make sure you guys install your fonts before heading into GIMP and making an image. So let's type again our text. I'll type it in all caps. So how do you resize your text? Press Ctrl A on your keyboard. Hover on this change size of selected text box. Click on it and then scroll up with your mouse wheel and it'll resize it. Very, very nice. Click on your move tool on your toolbox and then drag your text with your move tool to move it wherever you want. I'll create another new text. This time it will be named blocks. And by the way, if you don't press Ctrl A when you're resizing the image to select all the text, it will not work. So you need to press Ctrl A. Then again, use this change size of selected text box. So what I want to do now is select this mini target block. So you go to your toolbox and click on the free select tool or press F on your keyboard and then scroll to zoom in and you point and click while holding the control key to snap it in angles. If you don't hold the control key, it will not snap and it will make selecting these very very difficult somewhat difficult if you're on the edges it might not be straight so you need to press ctrl to snap it at a certain angle so let's start here it doesn't need to be that precise guys you can actually not do it precise and it still looks good well that will entirely depend on your image this is a very very fast block to go and turn it into a single okay. image so basically, you close your point to the point where you've started from. We started here, right? Now it will create these marching ants. What do you do? 
Well, I want this image to be separated from the background and we all know we have it selected now because of the marching ants. Because of our free select tool, we press enter, go to edit, cut. Where did it go? Well, it went to your clipboard. So now what you need to do is to go to edit, paste as, new layer. So basically, we now have this target. Okay, we, have, we still have the marching ants. How do you remove it? Control shift A or select none. So now we have this target block independent from the background. Look at this. By the way, look at the layers tab. You see this eye icon that just toggles the visibility of the layer. Look at it. It's now independent and we also left a mark. But don't worry. We are going to be changing the background. That's the reason why we did that. So click this delete layer and find a background online. So go to images.google.com. Type in free HD so the image will be 1920 by 1080. I think that doesn't matter because I'll show you a trick. I would like abstract backgrounds. So take advantage of the tools options. Click on the tools and then go to usage rights. Make sure this is ticked to Creative Commons licenses. You may need to learn more about Creative Commons licenses when you're creating your Minecraft Bedrock thumbnails because some of the images may want you to go and give credit to the creator of that image. So once you have Creative Commons licenses checked, it will basically gather all public domain images or other Creative Commons licenses image. And we also have this other option, which is size. Click on large because we want it to be large so it doesn't go below 1920 by 1080. So find your favorite image, click on it, go to its website. You gotta sign up to download this. So now that you've downloaded your background, go to file, open as layers or control alt O. Go to your downloads, find your favorite background, and then there we go. So what happened to our target or object? Well, if you look at the layers tab, look at the mini target. It's below our background. But it needs to be above our background so it can be seen. Go to your move tool, right click and click on alignment. Click on your image or whatever you want to align. I'll align our object in the middle. And press M on your keyboard to go back to your move tool. Shift T to go to your unified transform tool. Look at these handles. You guys can resize the image by using these handles. And if you don't press control while holding these handles and resizing your image, this will happen. But if you press control, it will resize from the center and it looks very, very nice. Click on transform when you're done modifying. And by the way, while you're transforming, you can change the image opacity. This is good when you're looking at multiple images or if your images are stacked. I was too focused on this idea and forgot to add commentary. I wanted the target block to be on a table, so I searched up table PNG on Bing. And I also wanted to add an arrow for the thumbnail. So you need to type actually curved arrow PNG and here's the arrow PNG that I like. I've used this arrow multiple times in videos for thumbnails. You can now go and save the image and save it wherever you like. For me, I'll just go right click and copy image. Once again, edit, paste as new layer. I'm gonna rename all these. You can also press F2 while selected on the layer to rename. So shift D again and resize, resize. You can also go right click, layer, transform and flip it vertically like this. Also, if you guys want to mess with its dimensions while Unified Transform tool is enabled, press Shift and then drag Handles. Matter of fact, let's actually change the background to a Minecraft background. Okay, I'm on DuckDuckGo. HD Minecraft Wallpapers. Again, you have your search tools here. You can go to Sizes. Make sure it's wallpaper. Wait, this image is more than 1920 by 1080. So let's deal with an image like that. You can also go to your File Explorer and then just drag the picture you've taken. There we go. It'll do it as a new layer immediately. So we scale this layer by going to Layer, Scale Layer, 1920 by 1080. There we go. Automatically suggested it. Go to Low Halo to preserve its pixelness. So I'm gonna go to select that mini target. So I select the mini target, go to Levels, Colors, Levels, and then I'm gonna adjust the color and make it more pop out. I want it to pop out. There we go. It looks much more brighter. And I'm gonna go and Control Shift N or press this new layer button to create a new layer so I can create a vignette. Go to Filters, Light and Shadow, Vignette. You can adjust the softness and the gamma. And you can also change the position by pressing this mouse 
logo icon you manually set it like this or you can type the numbers precisely Control shift n to create a new layer name it target shadow or something press p to go to the paintbrush tool select this thing and select this thing this is uh kind of mimics the minecraft type shadow or something so you can change the size make sure the hardness is at 100 and the force at 100 and then press on what location you want the shadow to be for me i kind of think it's right here there we go it should be black though there we go now it's black and you can change the opacity by dragging the slider i will change it to 50 percent and then here we go it has a shadow <laughs> looks very dope to add a stroke to our text you need to go press on the text layer right click go to layer crop the content this basically rasterizes the layer so that means you can still edit it with the text tool look at it edit but it will mess with the position because it was originally not a rasterized layer so control z to undo by the way you guys can do control y and control z to undo so now go to the layers tab press alt on your keyboard and left click on the image of the text right here not this text but here and it will create marching ants well it will basically create a selection for our text. So control shift N, make sure that new layer is below our original text. Name it stroke. It doesn't matter if you name it because it will basically merge it. Click on that stroke layer, right click, go to select, row by five pixels. Shift B to use the bucket fill tool. By the way, it says fill type, foreground and background. Foreground is basically this color, which is currently black. You can change it to whatever color you would like. I would like it to be black. Of course, this is the background color. It's very self-explanatory. If you want the white, you go to background color. But if you want the foreground, which is basically black, you go for that. So click on the selection. Boom. Now it will add a stroke. Click on the original text. Merge it down. Merge it down by pressing this merge this layer with the first visible layer tool button. The first visible layer below it is, of course, the stroke. And now I want the arrow to have a white stroke. So... Do the same process again. Right click, go to select, grow. Make sure the new layer is below the arrow. Click on the selection. Control shift A to deselect and then merge. Rename it once again. You can also add a drop shadow if you fancy. So click on the image that you would like to add a drop shadow on. Filters, light in shadow and then drop shadow. You can set it to whatever value you would want. And I'm going to do the same for the text. But I will lower the blur radius. And again, you have this toggle right here, which just basically makes it proportional. So turn that off if you don't want it to be like that. So now I have drop shadow on both the arrow and the text. So this is looking good. How do you export it? Well, you go to file, export as, name the file whatever you want. And make sure you guys change PNG to JPEG. JPEG has less size, so it will be much more easier for you guys to have your thumbnail accepted by YouTube. Because if you have your thumbnail with a large file size, it will not be accepted by YouTube. I think if it's 2 MB above, it will not be accepted by YouTube. Make sure this quality slider is to 100. Export and then marvel at what you have done. If you guys have made thumbnails using this tutorial, please start a hashtag on Twitter and follow me there because I want to see the creations you've made with the help of this tutorial. People have been finding my thumbnails very fascinating. If you guys really like my thumbnails and want to support me, go to my Patreon for only $2 and I'll post exclusive content there. Maybe even thumbnail videos like this one right here. I might also do some KD stuff in the future. But if you guys want to keep watching, again. Bon Appetit. In this episode, we're going to be reviewing the Elemental Swords add-on by Chetty. It adds, if you go to your creative inventory, equipment tab, swords section, nine swords in total. Nine Elemental Swords in total.